I've been collecting a lot of scrap walnut from some of my past projects and I haven't really known what to do with it until right now. I'm going to make myself an end grain cutting board out of scrap walnut and an extra piece of hard maple that I had laying around. So without further ado, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is take my DeWalt planer here and take everything down to three quarters of an inch thick. Now that I've got everything all planed down to three quarters of an inch thick, I'm gonna go ahead and run everything through the table saw and rip it down to one and five eighths inch thick. Then I'm gonna glue everything up and run it through the planer again to take it down to the final thickness of one and a half inches thick. That means each of my sections of my board are gonna be one and a half inches thick. Okay, we've got all of those strips cut up, and if we were doing an edge grain cutting board, we'd basically be done. We just have to glue this thing up, run it through the planer, and make it square. But we're not. We're doing an end grain cutting board, which means I have to glue this all up, and then cut it into pieces, and then stand it up on its end, and then reassemble it again. So the next step for us is going to be to glue all this up and then let it dry. Before I get started with this glue up, I just want to point out that I'm using Tight Bond 3 which is non-toxic and FDA approved for indirect food contact. I'll put a link to this in my description. This glue is also waterproof when dry and has a longer working time. Be sure to use plenty of clamps for good even clamping pressure. All right, this thing's pretty much ready to go. We're gonna let this thing sit overnight and see how it looks in the morning. Today is a new day, and the reason I know that is because I'm wearing a different colored t-shirt. So I went ahead and uh, removed our cutting board from the clamps, and the glue up turned out really well. But now I need to go ahead and flatten it in the planer before I cut it into strips to expose the end grain. All right, now that we're done playing this board, the next step for me is to rip this into one and five eighths slices. And that will expose the end grain so we kind of see what we're working with. In addition, it's going to be uh, sort of setting the thickness of the board. I plan to still plane off about an eighth of an inch. So I'm leaving an extra eighth inch so I can get that one and a half inch of thickness. So let's take it over to the table saw now and rip this into pieces. Well, that turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So that's a win. Um, so we got one more glue up now uh, to glue all these pieces together. But before I do that, I'm gonna try and randomize these a little bit. They're pretty similar no matter which way you go. But I still think it'd add a little bit more texture and randomness if I flip flop them. So I'm gonna flip flop a few of these boards and then I'm gonna throw it back up into the clamps and glue it up. And then we wait another day and then I'll see you guys tomorrow.
I like to remove any excess dry glue to keep the board as flat as possible as it slides through the planer. With an end grain board, remove a very small amount of wood with each pass in the planer. The orientation of the grain makes the board susceptible to tear out or separation. So the board is flat, but as you can see, there is a lot of damage on the back side. And this is kind of exactly what I was afraid of. Go ahead and drop me a comment and tell me how you guys prevent this from happening on an end grain cutting board using the standard blades. This isn't really that big of a deal though. What I'm gonna do is take it the table saw and just clean up that damaged edge, which is why I kept passing it through in the same direction. I just want all the damage to happen on one side once I saw it starting to happen. So let's take over the table saw now and clean up this edge and then square the board up. If I were to do this again, I would have squared up the long edge with the CA glue trick in the next step and then cleaned off the short ends of my crosscut sled. This would have ensured the corners were perfect right angles. I ended up getting lucky and they were still pretty much spot on. Be sure to line up the straight edge guide with the pattern on your board. When sanding, work your way through the grits up to 120, then stop, wet the board, and let it dry. Then finish with 120 and then 240. Wetting the board will cause the grain to pop, allowing you to sand it smooth. This will keep the board smooth longer. I'm going to be adding rubber stoppers to this, so it should be sitting a little ways off the table. So it should be pretty easy to pick up, and I like the clean look of no handles. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add a chamfer around the edge just to break this edge and make it a little softer and add a little bit of a cosmetic feature. The board looks beautiful and a lot of people will stop right there and there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to add a juice groove to this board. So I need to make a juice groove jig. So I'm actually going to put a link to the video I used to make this juice groove jig and I'm not taking any credit for it. This person and maybe other people have made the exact same jig can take all the credit for it. That's fine. So let's build that jig. I determined where I wanted the juice groove and then measured from the edge of the board to the edge of the router plate to determine the width of the spacer. Next, I measured the rough size of the board. Using 3 quarter inch plywood, I cut the base of the jig a few inches bigger than the board on all sides to be able to accommodate larger boards I might make in the future. Then I ripped some 2.5 inch router guides and some 1 inch spacers using the measurements from the previous step. I glued the guides and spacers together with CA glue. I placed the guides on the base to determine the final length. Then I cut them to length on the table saw. A miter saw would have been a better choice for this. Once I was happy with them, I added brad nails. The guides get screwed to the base to hold the board firmly in position. Now we have a jig and we are ready to cut the groove. When cutting your groove, move in a direction that pushes the router toward the guide and take small passes.
Well, I screw up my juice groove just a little bit right about here. But what I think I'm gonna do is just try and make the juice groove slightly larger to try and clean that up. So let's see if that works. The groove cleaned up pretty well, and to be honest, I like the width of it better. Everything works out in the end. I sanded the board one final time with 240 grit sandpaper. Then I pre-drilled some holes and screwed on the rubber feet. I added a link to this food grade mineral oil in the video description. I'm wiping it on in this video, but I would recommend soaking the board in oil for the best protection. Thank you for watching this entire video, guys. I really appreciate it. I could not do this without your support. Please subscribe, like, and comment, as well as check out one of these other great videos. See ya. I have no idea what I'm doing.